our plans for education, open the doors of college for all. Raise the Pell Grants every single year to keep up with inflation. Raise the tuition tax credit where it now is $1,600 to $3,500 a year. That will cover almost every community college in America. Give young people more AmeriCorps job opportunities to earn their own money for college. Crack down on the abuses of the private student loan companies. Some of them are charging our young people 20% interest a year, and it's wrong. And I tell our young college graduates, when you get out, if you are a nurse, a teacher, a police officer, or a fireman, if you are a public servant, it is a gift. And we know that because I want to say again how sorry Hillary and I were that a police officer here lost his life protecting her just last week. But when people do that kind of work, under her plan, their service will pay the loan off. Every year you serve, some of your student loan goes down. You will be able to serve, knock your loan down. Serve and knock your loan down. That will make America a better place. So, I just have to tell you, I believe if you nominate her and elect her president, and I think if Texas and Ohio vote for her, she will win the nomination and she will win the White House. I believe this. I think that America will have more jobs and more broadly shared prosperity in her term than you got when I was president. It will be better under her presidency if you adopt her. And that's very important. Now, let's talk a little bit about it was better then, but it'll be better in the future. We can always do better. I mean, th the other reason I think you should strongly support her is that this country has a lot of problems around the world, and we have to deal with them. We've got to bring our soldiers home from Iraq. But. No one wants it to fail. We've got to bring our soldiers home from Iraq, and under her plan, here's how it would be done. She would bring them home as quick as we can, consistent with our obligations to the 100,000 American civilians who live in Iraq. You can't abandon them. And the Iraqis that have stuck up for us, our drivers, our translators, nobody wants to leave them there high and dry. She would leave a small group in the north of Iraq where it's safe, to be available in case the real enemy, the Al-Qaeda, the terrorist who did 9-11 and kill all of our people, make a comeback there. But no permanent basis. She would use this opportunity of bringing the soldiers home from Iraq so the Iraqis could do what they've got to do. Look, we, why should we come home from Iraq? Because we've been there longer than we were in World War II. The deployments are longer than they were. Huge numbers of people have been killed, tens of thousands wounded, and the only decisions left are decisions they have to make. They have to decide how they're going to split the oil money, how they're going to share the political power. Those are their decisions, not ours. If they think, if they think we're going to do what Senator McCain recommends and stay 100 years, they won't make those decisions. Let me ask you something. Just in your own experience, of your family's life. People don't make hard decisions until they have to, do they? I, I've been thinking about how I could explain this so it would make sense. Suppose your next door neighbor's house burns down and your neighbor has nowhere to go. You would take your neighbor in, wouldn't you? We would all do that. Even if the neighbor had to sleep on a couch because we don't have a guest bedroom, we got a little house, we still let our neighbor stay. We'd let our neighbor stay a month. A lot of us would let our neighbor stay six months. But if our neighbor is still on the couch after five years, what do we know? It's not about the fire anymore. You just don't have to make the hard decision to figure out how to get out, go on your and begin again. That's where we are in Iraq now. We have done what we were asked to do, and they have to build their country in the future. It is time for the soldiers to come home. That is her position. The other thing that Hillary wants to say is we have to do this for the benefit of our military. We have used up the Army, the Marine Corps, the Guard, and the Reserve. 
All of them are deployed or on rotation. And she has spent a lot of time on this as a member of the Armed Services Committee, trying to protect them. She passed legislation with Republican co-sponsors to get them the soldiers' body armor quicker, to save more lives, to make sure that if guardsmen and reservists from Texas are injured, when they come home now for life, they get the same health care that regular military personnel do. She has tried as a senator to take care of them. But as president, she knows that the next president has got to rebuild the American military and we have got to take care of these veterans and we cannot do it if we keep all these people in Iraq. And the third thing I want to say in her position is there is a real war on terror. It's in Afghanistan where the whole world is trying to preserve a moderate Muslim democracy and finally get the leadership of the Al-Qaeda who murdered all our people on 9-11 and do what we can to protect Americans and people throughout the world, to start the Middle East peace process, to do all this stuff again. We cannot do this unless we bring our soldiers home from Iraq. The Commandant of the Marine Corps, not somebody running for president, the Commandant of the Marine Corps said, we need to go after the terrorists in Afghanistan, but I can't leave the Marines there very long unless you let me bring some home from Iraq. So if you want to fight terror, if you want to take care of the American military, if you want to do what's right in the long run for the Iraqis, you should support Hillary for president and bring our troops home. It is time. It is time to do that. This is the last thing I want to say. The third reason you ought to be for her for president is you, you need a president who won't forget the look I see in your face today when she or he is in the White House. It is really easy to get carried away with being president and to become isolated. It is easy. Come on now, let's have a little fun. We've been real serious, let's have a little fun. Think what being president's like, folks. First of all, if you get, if you get to be president, they play a song every time you walk in the room. They play hell and cheap every time you walk in the room. I was lost for three weeks after I left the White House. I had no idea where I was because nobody played a song anymore. <laughs> Washington, D.C. is really, really clogged with traffic. Except for the president. You just zip along in that bulletproof limo, never stopping a red light. You have no commute to work to the most famous office in the world. You live in America's finest public housing. <laughs> and your airplane, your airplane is so cool they make movies about it. Now, we're laughing, but you get the point, don't you? The truth is that the President of the United States is nothing more than the most fortunate, blessed, hired hand on the face of the earth. The President is given a brief period of time to serve you. And Hillary believes the job of the President is to be able to say these three things. It's really important. The American people are better off when I quit than when I started. Our children and grandchildren have a brighter future. And our fascinating but troubled world is coming together and not being driven apart. If you agree with that, you need to know that you will never have to worry about her forgetting you. She will always have your back. She will always be the change you can count on. She will always be in the business of giving your kids a better future and making sure the American people are better off when she quits and when she started. That's the real reason you should support her for president. Thank you and God bless you all.